Hello, everybody. In the last episode, we turned on inverse kinematics, and now this guy, his head follows us around everywhere we go. Super creepy. Now, today we're going to make his eyes work. One of the reasons this is super creepy is because his eyes are just dead in the middle of his face, and that's that's incredibly creepy. Um, eyes are a big part of our of our emotions. And the human brain interprets eye movements very, very fast and on a subconscious level. So if you implement eye motion wrong, wow, you're going to look really creepy and you'll have a game full of serial killers. Presumably that's not what you want, but even if it is, it's good to know how to animate eyes. Normally this is where I say, well, there's this free library you can use, or this is how you program it. But this is a, like a master's thesis topic. And I really don't think any of you want to spend a year researching the biology and neurology of human eyes and um, responses, emotional responses to human eye motions. Oh, that sounds like a nightmare. So I am, in fact, just going to say you should buy this. This is the best library I could find, and it's 15 bucks. Uh, as far as I know, there is no free eye motion library for Unity that comes anywhere near this. So if you found a good one, or you made a good one, feel free to let me know. But until then, this is the best one I could find. It's by uh, Tor Knabe. It's the only thing he's put out uh, on the asset store. He goes by Ficus on the forums, and he's very responsive. Now, with that in mind, I'm going to show you how to install it, how to use it, and you're going to see why it would be a tremendous pain to have to program this yourself. Uh, I can't imagine programming this myself, uh, not unless it was like my entire project or I was getting paid for it for like a year. So let's install it. I've already got the scripts open here. You can either drag them on or you can hit add component, but you're going to want to do it to wherever the animator is. So let's go ahead and add in an eye and head animator. This is like the subconscious part of your eye motion. And then let's add in a look target controller. This is like the conscious part. Now they do have a video showing you how to do this, but I'm going to walk you through it with the specific setup that I've recommended, and I'm also going to give you some hints to avoid having some serious problems. First hint, lock. Locking is great because it means you can click anywhere you want and you'll still have this sidebar, which is good because this is the sidebar we are trying to configure. If you hit Alt and click on one of these arrows, it'll open up all the children, which is good because we need these eye and eyelid bones. If you don't have eye and eyelid bones, you're not using my approach, which doesn't necessarily mean you're in trouble, but it does mean that you're going to have to try and figure some of this out yourself. So here in the eye and head animator, we're going to tell it we're using mechanism eye bones and we're using eyelid bones, and we have to drag these eyelid bones into the proper spots. Now, make sure that you drag these eyelid bones into the proper spots. If you accidentally use the same eyelid twice or something, you can really end up with some screwy looking animations and it can screw up your scene view. You might end up with, you know, a scene view character whose eyes are rotated funny and that can be hard to deal with. I'm just going to use rotation uh, for the eyelid bone mode because it works fine like that. And then we're going to hit eyes open looking straight save because that's where it is at default. Now we're going to select the eye eyelids and we're going to say, hmm, eyes closed looking straight. Well, we're looking straight, so let's close the eyes. Uh, oh, no. That looks right. Save. And then you can hit load here. And if both of your eyelids open, so far, so good. So now what? Well, now we want to go down to looking up. Uh, looking up, you want to actually move the eyes. Don't just estimate it. Now, the reason for that is because these... This, this, this actually uses the scope of your eye motion to determine how your eyelids move. And if your eyeballs remain looking straight, you're going to end up with a divide by zero screwy thing going on when your eyelids will turn inside out. So don't do that. And hit load. And if everything returns properly, you're currently set up perfect. Now looking down, same thing. Unfortunately, the lower lids don't really open very realistically, as you can see. So we're not going to open our lower lids. We're just going to close our upper lids. And then hit load one last time. We're ready to rumble. Howdy. He's in an idle mode right now. He's not really giving us uh, any attention. 
So you can see a couple of things. First off, I didn't actually disable the script that points his head at us. It's simply that this overrides that. So it controls his head, it controls his eye motions, and you can see that it's reasonably realistic. It also tilts his head properly and makes it look really nice. So uh, this is a pretty good model. You can see that he looks away after a while. You can give him other things to look at. You can also set a lot of his settings right here. So the look target controller is what makes his eyes move consciously. So we can give him some points of interest. So for example, let's go ahead and um, let's go ahead and make one of these lights a point of interest. The reason I'm not making an arcade cabinet a point of interest is because the arcade cabinets actually have their center down here, uh, and I'd have to put in you know another object. Let's give him a stare back factor so that he'll stare at us if we stare at him. Let's give him a personal space thing so that if we get too close, he'll look away shyly, because I'm shy like that. Don't make me blush. Uh, and the player eye center. It defaults to the camera main, and that's fine. We don't need to change that. We don't need to edit any of this stuff, except I like to turn on the sight lines. Uh, it's up to you how you want to edit this stuff if you think that... Um, that it would be more realistic or less realistic. For example, I can turn up the nervousness and his eyes will jitter a little bit more. Mm, I got too close and he's shy. I also got so close that I clipped through his nose. I should change the camera parameters because that's also quite creepy. Uh, he started to stare at the eye because I got too, the light because I got too close and he's like, ah. I'm going to go look at something else for a while. But since he's got a high stareback factor, he'll eventually come back to looking at us as long as we're looking at him. So right now, his behavior is erratic, but his eye motion and head motion is quite good. So what we're going to do later on is we're going to make his behavior make sense. we uh, It's hard to provide a generic, sensible behavior script. So it is based on what your characters are going to do. And since this is at least at the moment taking place in an arcade, we'll probably give him arcade-specific behaviors. And that means that we're going to end up with uh, um, things like he'll look at arcade machines that are on and stuff like that. And we'll get to that eventually. But for now, um, we're going to leave it at this. I recommend this library very heavily and without, without hesitation. It's 15 bucks. And it is, uh, you get all the source, so we can edit it, and we will be editing it. And not only that, you get uh, in immediate integration with Final IK, which is another solution I recommend. So that's really nice. I'm going to go ahead and remove the attention controller, because we don't need it at the moment. And uh, just send you off with uh, some looking around. Did I not delete the points of interest? Bang. So this is a lot more realistic than the empty, dead-eyed gaze that he had before. And we can adjust whether he wants to look at us and what sort of thing he wants to look at. In the next episode, we'll do emotions, and we'll give him a face that actually animates. Uh, I'm also going to add pores to his skin. Um, I forgot to do that before, before coming in, but that's fine, before starting recording. Um, it's just because when you get real close, you can see his face looks really flat. See you next time.